Hello, welcome back to the channel. Today we will be exploring a topic which is, is it worth it to be a self-taught software engineer today in 2019? If this is your first time on the channel, my name is Zia, I'm a software engineer at Twitter, and I talked about software engineering, technical interviews, and technologies in general on this channel. Alright, let's get into it. First up, so when we explore this topic of whether it makes sense to be a self-taught software engineer, let's start talk about why would you want to be a self-taught software engineer. First thing is, save costs. Being a self-taught software engineer helps you save and eliminate a lot of the financial costs associated with going to college or a coding bootcamp. Two approaches which are the most common ways to being a software engineer today. All of the resources that you need to be a software engineer or to learn to be a software engineer are mostly available online today. For example, you can go to GitHub and pick up basic data structures, algorithms that you might need to learn about. To learn to be a software engineer today are available online and you only require a working laptop and a working internet in order to start learning. If you choose to go a college or coding bootcamp path, then those paths cost at least 40000 per year. Secondly, learn at your own pace. Being a self-taught software engineer means that you're able to learn at any time of the day that you prefer. Instead of going to college, for example, you have to be at a certain location at a certain time in order to participate in a class. Same thing with a coded bootcamp. But for a software engineer who is self-taught, you can pick and choose any time that you prefer. Whether you're wearing your pajamas, you're laying in bed, or you're somewhere in Bali, laying by the beach, you can learn at any time you prefer, at any pace that you prefer. There's no strict requirement on you being at a certain place at a certain time in order to participate in learning. And that's the beauty of being a self-taught software engineer, where you can have the flexibility of picking and choosing the time and location of when you learn best. So I think that's a big advantage of being a self-taught software engineer. Third thing here is the ability to pick and choose your classes. If you choose to participate or if you choose to go to college or a coding bootcamp, the curriculum is mostly set out already for you ahead of time. So you can't really choose or pick the classes that you want or don't want to take. A typical college education involves taking core classes and electives. So your core classes could be math, English, and your electives could be computer science classes like NLP, for example, natural language processing. Now, compared to that situation where if you go to college, you have to take classes that you might not be very interested in or might not be really relevant to your day-to-day, -day, compare that to being a self-taught software engineer where you might be interested in artificial intelligence and user experience, right? So in that case, you can choose, you can pick and build your own curriculum such that it fits your interests and also fits your, the pace of learning that you're going at. I think that's the beauty also of being a self-taught software engineer in which you can pick and choose any class or any curriculum that works best for you. And in some cases, I've seen people actually going to college, taking examples of classes from curriculums from Georgia Tech, Stanford, for example, mix and match them together in order to build their own learning curriculum. And I think that's the beauty of being a self-taught software engineer. So that at a higher level are the pros of being a self-taught software engineer. One, saving financial cost. Two, learn at your own pace. And three, pick and choose any curriculum that you prefer. Those are the three high level pros. So now that we've clarified that, let's talk about should you do it? Personally, my own take here is I don't think everyone should try to be a self-taught software engineer for the reasons below. Now, the first major downside of being a self-taught software engineer is that there is no structure to help guide your education. And that is a problem for many people starting out in their career as a software engineer. The problem there is that for people who have no idea of how to start or what is actually required to be a software engineer, this is a huge detriment. Sometimes it can feel like you're a mouse running in a spinning wheel where there's no end in sight. 
And that's a problem for a lot of people who are trying to teach themselves how to program. Of course, there are many resources online today with tutorials or courses that you can take, but I don't think that they're structured in a way that helps you prepare to be a software engineer. I don't think they have the most complete resource to help you prepare. And some of them, some of the courses online are actually tailored just to make enough money out of you. A major downside for, for self-taught software engineers is that there's no accreditation to being a self-taught software engineer. Now that's a problem because many top tier tech companies today are looking for that when they're screening for candidates. They're looking for people who have had undergraduate degrees, masters or PhDs in computer science when they're screening for candidates. Now, does that mean someone who, who's self-taught cannot compete with people who have had degrees in computer science? No, that's not what I'm saying here. However, what I'm saying here is that with the pool of candidates getting much wider and much more knowledgeable and much more well-educated than yesteryears, that means it becomes much more competitive and to your detriment if you are a self-taught software engineer. Because when companies are hiring, they're trying to minimize the risk by bringing, by bringing on someone who's had experience or someone who's had education in computer science because they know these people have had the fundamentals and they are pre-vetted by all these different educational institutes to teach and guide them in the learning of computer science. Now, being a self-taught software engineer, that means you're coming in and interviewing and the companies don't really have a good grasp of how you would perform in a day-to-day. -day. Now, a lot of people might agree with this. Software engineering interviews today are not very well structured. There are many loopholes in there and it's very difficult for you to really perform your best in those technical interviews unless you have brushed up and prepared for those specific questions. That is a fact, a lot of people are aware of it and being a self-taught software engineer, it becomes to your detriment. It becomes a kryptonite for you, so to speak, when you don't have an accredited degree behind your resume. And that could be a problem for people who are looking for jobs as a software engineer. Third thing here is, being a self-taught software engineer requires a lot of dedication and discipline. Why do I say that? Because when you're a self-taught software engineer, it comes with a lot of flexibility. You can pick and choose any curriculum you like, you can study at any time that you prefer, and you can pick any location that you want to study from. Now, with that flexibility, sometimes it can become overwhelming for a lot of people who don't have the most motivation or who don't have the right motivation in order to continue their education. When you're working on something, especially something like learning how to program, when you don't have a dedicated network of support behind you, that can be very difficult to continue that progress. For example, if you're going to college and you're in a class of computer science undergrads learning together, it becomes a support network because everyone's trying to, everyone's struggling, everyone's trying to learn and you have your professors, you have your TAs, you have your peers who are supporting each other, giving you the support that you need, giving you the guidance that you need in order to grow and learn. However, being a self-taught software engineer, there's, there's no such network to help you get through those dips. When there's no support network to tell you if you're going in the right direction or if you're learning the right things, it can be very easy and very tempting to just say, all right, I quit, throw in the towel. So one of my favorite authors, Seth Godin, recently wrote in his book, The Dip. He describes that in every worthy endeavor, the winners are usually the ones who weather through the dip and end up at the other side of the dip to see the light of day. The quitters, for example, are the ones who struggle through the dip and quit midway through. Most people quit halfway through when the going gets tough. Being a self-taught software engineer, the dip can appear much deeper and longer than you thought it could be. And that is the problem. Whenever you're starting something on your own initiative, and when there's no clear direction and no support network to tell you if you're heading in the right direction or not, the dip usually appears longer and deeper than what you expected it to be. The key goal here is that 
you want to persevere and prepare yourself for seeing where that dip is gonna be and then just brace yourself to work through the dip. So with that said, those are the pros and cons of being a self-taught software engineer. My personal recommendation here is that it depends on your situation whether it makes sense to be a self-taught software engineer. The best solution here would be to find a hybrid of both approaches where you have the flexibility to learn at your own pace and having a support network either through online, forums, groups that are both learning the same thing and also trying to achieve the same goals. That way, you can have the best of both worlds where you can learn at your own pace, you can save costs, and you can also have a support network or a mentor, for example, who's been through the things that you've been, you're going through right now and can tell you whether you're on the right track or not and help guide you when you feel that you're not doing so well. Okay? When you have both of those things combined together, that's when I think you're really going to succeed as a self-taught software engineer. Now, that is all I have to say for today. If you enjoyed that video, remember to click that subscribe button and hit that bell button for notification of my future videos. Thank you for watching. I'll see you next time.